Okay, so I wanted to make this video of chapter 10 example problems so that you guys would have um, the chance to kind of see me solve some of these example problems or some like harder um, problems that have to do with exponents and logs. Um, so that's what the purpose of this little video is going to be. Okay, so in section 10.3, we solved exponential equations such as 2 to the x equals 16 by writing 16 as a power of 2 and then setting the exponents equal to each other once the basics were equal. But it turns out we can use logs to solve these types of problems. And it's a lot easier because, or at least I like it better, because you're not at the point where you have like 2 to the x equals 16 and you're just like figuring out what x is. And it's kind of like math, like mumbo jumbo. Um, using logs makes a lot more sense to me. So we are going to do some example problems. So first up, we have solve log base 4 of x minus two equals two. So again, just like I really harped on in class, knowing the relationship between a logarithmic expression and an ex exponential expression and knowing how to translate between those two um, very related ideas is like the key to chapter 10. So when I look at this, I know that I can rewrite it as four squared equals x minus two. And then 4 squared, of course, is 16 equals x minus 2. I'm going to add 2 to the other side, so 18 is equal to x. And then the only other thing you have to make sure you're careful of in these types of problems is making sure that when you plug in whatever value you've got for x, it doesn't make the value of your logarithm negative, right? Because remember that when we have like log base b of x equals y, x and y and b all have to be positive. So if I plug in 18 for x here, I get log of 4 of 16, still positive, we're in business. All right, next up, let's solve log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of x minus 1 equals 1, okay? So here I'm going to use my product property, which I know says that when I have addition of two logarithmic expressions that have the same base, I can change this into log base two of x times x minus one. I can multiply together the things that I'm taking the log of, and that's going to be equal to one. And then again, I can rewrite this into exponential form. I know that this is going to be two to the one equals x times x minus one. So two is equal to x squared minus x. I'm going to have to this. So I'm going to subtract 2 to the other side and I'm going to get 0 equals x squared minus x minus 2. And then, of course, to factor, I'm going to have 0 is equal to, um, thankfully, this guy is not too bad to factor. And so I get 0 is equal to x minus 2 times x plus 1, 1. So then I know is x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. However, if I plug in negative 1, I'm going to have log base 2 of negative one, which of course is a no-go. So I cannot have negative one as a solution, but if I plug in two, I have log base two of two and log base two of two minus one, which is of course log base two of one. So I'm good there and good there. So X equals two is a good solution. All right, and then last up I have log of x plus 2 minus log of x equals 2. And of course, there's an implied base of 10 there. Um, when we don't have a base written, it is 10. Um, and so I'm going to actually just write that in there so that it's not implied anymore. It's explicit. And then I can use my quotient property, which tells me that when I have subtraction, I can rewrite the logarithmic expression into one expression that is division. So I'm going to have x plus two divided by x. I don't know why I wrote a two there. Divided by x equals two. And then again, I can write 10 squared equals x plus two over x. 10 squared is 100. So I have 100 equals x plus two over x. And now in order to solve for x, I need to get it out of the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply x out of my denominator. So I get 100 x is equal to x plus 2. I'm going to subtract x and get 99x equals 2. So then x is equal to 299. It's kind of a strange answer there, but the more you know.
Okay, so not too bad on the application problem or on the logarithmic equation problems. Um, but now we're going to talk about exponential and logarithmic application problems. Okay, so first we're going to talk about population size. So population size y of a community of lemmings varies according to the relationship y is equal to y sub zero e to the 0.15 t. In this formula, t is time in months and y sub zero is the initial population at time zero. Estimate the population after six months if there are originally 5,000 lemmings. So my equation, y equals y sub zero e to the 0.15 t, I need to plug some stuff in. So I know that y is the population size and that's what I'm solving for. Why not, or y sub zero is the initial population, which is 5,000. So I'm gonna have y is equal to 5,000 e to the 0.15 times t, and this time we wanna know six months. So I'm gonna plug in six. So that is equal to y equals 5,000 e to the 0.15 times six is equal to 0.9. And then all you're going to do is plug that into your calculator and you are going to get y is approximately equal to 12,298.016 lemmings, but of course you can't have 0 0.016 of a lemming. And so it's going to be 12,298 lemmings. That's a lot of population growth in six short months, like really a lot of lemmings. These things must multiply very quickly. All right, and then next up we have a investment application. So this one's a little bit trickier. How long does it take an investment of $2,000 to double if it is invested at 5% interest compounded quarterly? We have our necessary formula and um, I have a little explanation there of what each variable is. On the test, I will give you the formula, but I'm not gonna tell you which one is for compound interest and which one is for um, um what is it called when you have um when you have compounding continuously so i'm not going to tell you like a equals p e to the rt versus a equals p times one plus r over n to the nt you have to know that whenever you are given like compounded quarterly and it doesn't say um compounded continuously then you so compounded continuously, you automatically think PE to the RT. When it you have like compounded quarterly or weekly or whateverly, then that's when you use this other formula. Okay, so we know the investment is $2,000. So that's our P, $2,000. Um, we know that it is invested at 5%. So that is the rate of interest, R equals 5%, which is equal to 0.05 because we are we're going to ultimately probably put this in our calculator. We know that compounding quarterly, quarter means four, and so we know that R is equal to, or excuse me, N is equal to four, number of times that is compounded per year, quarterly, four. And then we know that the investment wants to be doubled. So we know that A is going to be equal to 2,000 times two, which is equal to 4,000, and we want to be solving for T. So if we plug this all in, we're going to get 4,000 equals 2,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 4 to the 4t. Okay, so I just plugged everything into my equation. Now I'm going to do a little bit of simplification. 4,000 equals 2,000 times, I'm going to enter 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 4 into my calculator, and I should get 1.0125 to the 4t. I'm going to divide that 2,000 to the other side, or I'm going to divide by that 2,000 to get rid of it. 4,000 divided by 2,000 is, of course, 2 equals 1.0125 to the 4t. And then to solve this, I see that I have a t in my exponent. And so I know that I'm going to ultimately use that power rule of logs. And so I'm going to take the log of each side, log 2 equals log 1.0125 to the 4t, which is equal to log 2 equals 4t times log 1.0125. I'm going to divide by that log 1.0125 so that I can isolate that 4t. 
So I have log of 1.0125. I'm gonna kind of move up a little bit so that I am, I'm kind of running out of space here. I'll switch colors. So over here I have log of two divided by log of 1.0125 equals 4t. And then I also know that I'm going to need to figure out what that number is and then divide by four. So then figure out whatever that approximates to divide by four. And then you should get that T is approximately equal to 13.94. Um, so it will take basically 14 years for your investment to double. And that's how you solve um, that sort of problem. So hopefully this helped out if you were struggling with um, solving a little bit more advanced log problems. Um, I have posted more chapter 10 practice problems on the weekly assignment guide. And so if you need more practice, I really recommend doing that. Actually it's homework, so you have to do it. Um, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I will post the answers to the chapter 10 practice problems as well. So hopefully that helps out. Thanks for watching. Have a great day guys.